y'all, welcome back. Today we are talking new beauty releases. This series on my channel is usually called Tepid Takes. I call it Tepid Takes because I usually buy most things. Like if I can find a justification to review it or if I just want it, then I will buy it because my channel really hinges on having an encyclopedia of things to be able to swatch one against the other to help y'all make the most informed buying decisions. So when we go into new makeup release videos, my takes tend to be kind of tepid. So I did take a peek at Trend Mood and that's you know usually what I use to kind of gauge what's coming out. And I think that this is gonna be kind of a gift guide style tepid takes. Like yeah, a lot of the stuff isn't new. It is groupings or re-releases or what have you of making items that we know and love more giftable. And some of them are great and some of them are silly. So that'll be fun to talk about. But before we jump in, I wanna talk about one of the best gifting opportunities this season. And that is with my good friends over at Ana Luisa. So Ana Luisa is sponsoring this portion of today's video. They are one of my favorite companies to work with because they really hit all the marks for me. They are beautiful, sustainable, and affordable. All of their stuff starts at $39, and that's before all of the amazing discounts that they're offering on site right now just for the gifting season. So keep an eye on their website. It's going to have all sorts of amazing offers throughout Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and beyond, and you can always use my code khaki 20 to get 20% off of your order regardless. I'm gonna share with you all a couple of new items that I got from Ana Luisa because that's how this always works, but but I also am going to make a list down below of my picks, again, kind of gift guide style, because Ana Luisa is so giftable. When you go on the website, you can see everything from like bestsellers to new releases, and you can shop by all of the different kinds of jewelry, obviously. But what I love is within each of these categories, you can see such different kind of styles of jewelry. They have something for every person, every mood. There are really dainty, beautiful, timeless pieces. There are more kind of statement pieces. There's everything in between and they're always coming out with new stuff. So I'm wearing one that I y'all already knew that I had that I never take off. It's in, it's in my Finding Ferdinand shoots. Like this thing just never like leaves me. I love it so much, but I recently got these. These are the ones that I was so excited about because they remind me so much of Lisa Eldridge. And I wore them when I got to meet Lisa Eldridge, so that was really cool. And I have been wearing them every day since. It's really nice. Like typically I don't wear a lot on my other fingers other than like my, my middle fingers, but this is such a comfortable, super, super lightweight little stack that never gets in my way. And I just love the way that it looks. So that's those. They've become something that I put on every single day. Like I can't make the excuse not to. They're just so easy easy and so pretty. And then these earrings, my goodness. You know, Ana Luis does a lot of great hoops. They have like an entire page that you can just shop their hoops, right? These are awesome. Like they just have this perfect size, perfect chunkiness to them. These do come in multiple sizes. This is the mini, but there's something really like beautiful and modern about the shape. It's a statement that you can see from far away, which I really like. So it's like, you know, your earrings are quite visible, but they're so streamlined and kind of minimal at the same time. So I've been wearing them nonstop since I got them. They're actually surprisingly like lightweight they're not you know they don't feel like plastic or something but they don't ever get in my way or anything and hanging them under my plugs is never a big deal so if you're unfamiliar with Ana Luisa they are carbon neutral water neutral they only use recycled gold they do not use like virgin mined gold they also have solid gold jewelry silver jewelry and diamonds so there really is something for everybody you and everybody on your list on Ana Luisa and this is the best time to get the deals on anything that you want from the Ana Luisa website so again I'm going to leave kind of my top 10 down below of just like what I would pick for maybe me and also for gifting and things like that because there are just such beautiful pieces on their website and honestly some things come and go and then come back and some things come and go and then that's it so if you see something you like I highly recommend seizing on it but I've been wearing these pieces for years this is the gift that keeps on giving and I can't recommend them highly enough so definitely check out my links down below and thank you as always to Ana Luisa for sponsoring a portion of today's video so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into today's holiday tepid takes. Okay, so the first thing that comes up is so good. It's just so good. This is like something that if I were in a marketing room and somebody had given me a fresh cup of coffee right in the morning and said like, what do you think we should do? And I'm like, here's the most brilliant idea right off the dome. Clinique Black Honey, but in a bedazzled case. For somebody who loves Clinique Black Honey because it's such a crowd pleaser, okay? That's the essence of holiday gifting, okay? This is not jumping the shark. The idea to me 
of holiday gifting when it comes to beauty is not jumping the shark. I have two kind of poles that really bug me. This end, let's call this like the, the weenie end, right? Where it's like everything is just like minis and it all feels kind of like chintzy. And then there's the other end where it's like so over the top, like these ridiculous advent calendars and things like that. And like, sure, that is some people's thing. And I will say like, it makes good content, but when I have received advent calendars from brands in the past, it's just so overwhelming. It's just so overwhelming. It's just so much stuff. And so that's kind of the spectrum that I'm going to be navigating this in, but at the same time, there are things that just strike me as like brilliant, categorically brilliant. And so when you take Clinique Black Honey, which is this beautiful, translucent kind of, you know, berry, rusty red color that's supposed to be sort of universally flattering because it is translucent. It works on a lot of different people. It's not personally my thing. I, you know, much prefer a little prune noir moment. But this product sells off the shelves, okay? Went viral on TikTok. Plenty of people really love it. It's had like a huge renaissance recently. You take it, you put it in a holiday case that is literally just this gorgeous bedazzling that's like just this much over the top. I'm here for it. What's the, what's the price? Okay. $30. I don't know exactly how much it usually is, but that seems about right. You know, if you're gonna do a bedazzled case for something like this, Clinique isn't crazy expensive, but it's also not crazy inexpensive. I just think that's a great idea. 10 out of 10 Clinique. I don't want it. <laughs> but I can see why a lot of people would want it. All right, let's keep scrolling, scrolling. We'll keep uh, trolling on screen mood. Oh, just as I had said, the extreme advent calendars. Now, I have to admit, <laughs> already going back on my own word here. This is $400. It is the YSL Beauty Holiday 2023. Now, do I own most of this? Probably. I love that they tell you what's in all of it. I think that the idea of an advent calendar is that it's supposed to be a surprise, but like at the same time when you buy something, you should know what it is. I'm torn on that, but this has a lot of things in it. I don't know what the actual like value value is, but it's got travel size mini and full size products, which does feel a little frustrating. Like nobody wants a mini, no one wants a tra- I mean, maybe a travel size of a perfume, but I don't want like a mini lipstick. Ugh. Yeah, mini lash clash mini rouge pure couture satin lipstick mini mascara yeah i'm sorry four hundred four hundred dollars and it's gonna be a bunch of minis uh, i don't want it that's not a fun thing for me to interact with and i think that it's kind of a silly way to spend your money all right next i mean i guess during the holidays revlon has decided to just release a concealer like that's cool holiday this holiday that there's still drugstore out here just putting out regular makeup i guess but this is the new Flexwear full cover. Now, do I know anything about Revlon and their history and whether this is like a re-release or a, I don't know, theme and variation on another formula? No, I have no context for that. What I have context for is the fact that there are 15 shades and they look bananas. They look bananas. I mean, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight probably that I could wear. And then on the black model's arm, we do have a range of undertones, but it is by no means exhaustive and the deepest shade is still incredibly light. This is worth mentioning to me because I just reviewed the Koki Double Time Full Cover Concealer. I'm not gonna get on my soapbox here, but like drugstore has always been the place I feel like it's almost been leading in terms of shade ranges. And I don't know what's going on right now. This all feels so phoned in. Why are we making full cover matte concealers in 15 shades or in their case, like eight, I think? Like I'm not gonna apologize for like feigning confusion here. Like I'm not particularly versed, like I said, in drugstore in general. I had to lower my camera. I was like, I'm tired of sitting up straight. <laughs> so yeah, like I was saying, a matte formula, a full coverage matte formula means like the more full coverage and more matte a formula is, the better the shade match has to be, okay? That is high risk. That's so high risk and you, I, there's just no excuse. So no, pass. Oh no! wasn't going to talk about this, but I think I saw it on Tom's thumbnail. I have not watched their new Critical Sass yet, and that is <laughs> that is my treat for this video. I don't like to kind of get everybody else's opinions in my mind right when I'm about to film one of these, you know, like Hannah and Tom and stuff. So anyway, this is a new collab from P. Louise and Michaela, as in Michaela What's-Her-Face from TikTok, who pulled the shenanigans with the L'Oreal mascara. L'Oreal, right? Telescopic? Yeah. And 
Then, you know, she's done collabs with e.l.f. for her wedding lipstick, I think. Like, why do I know this? It's like when lyrics live in your brain to a song that you don't like, but you've heard it so many times, you're like, oh, why do I know this song? That's how I feel about Michaela. I'm just like, why do I know so much about what she's done? <laughs> I don't watch, I don't think I've watched one TikTok from Michaela. So anyway, this is this massive, looks like it's inspired by Frozen, but it says to have it to hold, in case you get cold, gigantic palette. And you know what? I think that everybody deserves to have the colors that they want in the format that they want at the price point that they want. And maybe one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifty 10, 50 shades of blue and beige and brown. That might be somebody's thing. Every time somebody does the embossing on the square pans though, it really gives Jeffree Star to me. And I wish that it didn't because everyone should be allowed to do that. But still, it's just like, kind of triggering. <laughs> I'm using that word, you know, not that seriously, but regardless, this is not for me. And also Michaela doesn't need my money, but it does also just smack so hard of the way that TikTok is just doing everything that YouTube did 10 years before. Basically, I mean, I look at the way that Michaela does her makeup and airbrushes and all of the faux pas and foibles that all of these creators are committing and everything. And I can't help but be the kind of like cynical, like, you know, like legacy creator, I guess you would say, that's just being like, God, haven't we done this before? You know, if I had a real brain, if I only had a brain, I would recreate Tati's original series, her original WTF series over on TikTok. Because, you know, history is just repeating itself and that's what blew her up. Maybe that's what I'll do. Ooh, 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 I'm getting some PR, I think. So this is, because they reached out to me via email, Road. I'm wearing all Road skincare right now. Your girl's back on antibiotics for perioral dermatitis. Having a great time, having a great time. No, when I reached out to the like online medical doctor thing, because I'm not going to an actual dermatologist about this, I'm like, I know what it is, okay? I don't need to pay a copay, just give me the drugs. It was like, hey, they put me on a 30-day cycle of doxycycline and uh, it wasn't enough. And so this time, when I got to the pharmacy, these were some big boy antibiotics. They're like in like these, you know, capsules. They're just larger. They look a lot more serious. So uh, yeah, I've been on them for like two days and already everything's starting to like eviscerate. So I'm just like, all right, cool. So all that to say, I've been using Rhodes skincare now as like my main skincare because this is so random, but I was like basically searching online. I was like, okay, so I'm supposed to go crawl in a hole and let my skin dry out and just like suffer and admit defeat when I have peripheral dermatitis. Like I'm not supposed to do anything to my skin forever. I'm just supposed to be miserable like that the idea. And I googled, I was like, well, what can I use? Is there anything I can use? And actually what came up was Hailey Bieber talking about her own struggles with perioral dermatitis. And I was like, okay, so can I use Road on perioral dermatitis? And they're like, it's safe for everything. And I was like, I mean, it can't get worse. And it hasn't made things worse. And I also just love her peptide lip balms. And that was all a long way of saying that they are coming out with the new sparkly tinted peptide lip treatment jelly bean. Soft sheer baby pink tint with a sparkly finish that has a sweet jelly bean scent. It is $16. And there's also a set inside of this like kind of like jelly bean container, which I don't need, that has a lip treatment and the peptide glazing fluid. So this is available November 22nd, which is two days from now, but I assume I'll be getting it in the mail pretty soon. I have a road peptide lip treatment like everywhere in my life. Like that's just, it's, it's kind of a mainstay for me. I did also run across an old Glossier, like an unopened box of the old formula of the GlossierBomb.com coconut. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny when you like have had to make all these decisions because that wasn't available. And you're like, well, this is the best thing. This is the best thing. And then you're like, I wonder if I would ever go, yeah, mm -hmm, I would go back. Yes, I would Glossier. Y'all made a big honking mistake when you reformulated that one. Yes, you did. Oh, it's not called Duck Plump. It's not called Duck Plump. Drugstore really is just exempt from the holidays. They're like, we're just gonna put out makeup. And they're putting out Duck Plump High Gloss Pigment Gloss. This is so TikTok. Oh God, don't you know that this is the name of some kind of sensation happening on TikTok? Plumping gloss with spicy ginger in 17 shades for the ultimate injectionless pout. Feel the extreme plumping sensation powered by spicy ginger. I really feel like this is the kind of product that just relies on people being new and not having bought something like this before because it's kind of like a pH color changing lip product where you're like, once you try one, you've really tried them all. And the thing about these is it doesn't matter what color they are. No, I'm not confusing it with a pH color 
color-changing lip balm, it's just gonna irritate your lips so much that they're gonna be red. And you better get it in the lines because if you don't, and if you're like me and you kind of like cheat a little bit of lip gloss in the corners of your mouth so that your mouth doesn't dry out during the day, you use it kind of like a, a, a little bit of a chapstick kind of thing, like a lip balm. Don't do that with one of these because it's just gonna turn everything that it touches red. No, I don't need duck plump. Oh, Adele is putting out a makeup line. I have to say that imagery that they're showing here is a jump scare. That's so much makeup. That's like theater level makeup. That's like, I haven't seen that amount of makeup on a face trying to sell me makeup since like MAC Viva Glam. Like that's just a lot. So it says, according to the trademark filing, it will include eyeshadow similar to the ones her makeup artist uses to create her smoky eye look, eyeliner, lipsticks, lip balms, body care, creams and lotions, perfumes, also jewelry, watches, underwear, and more. Okay. So this isn't necessarily a photo of the makeup. This is a photo of her makeup artist preparing her for like a performance or something which calls for theater makeup, you know, because it's very far away. Everything needs to be exaggerated. I don't think that that's a really good image to use. Yeah, it's just a trend mood edit based on like the makeup that she wears on stage because yeah, no one would want to like, you, you wouldn't, that's kissing distance, you would look wild. Anyway, yeah. What do I think about Adele having a makeup brand? I feel like I can't say anymore that like I've seen enough because the churn is never going to stop and as cynical as I've wanted to be about these kinds of things, Rare Beauty is a great brand, so is Rode. So like, I will always try it, you know? And I don't think Adele is a particularly problematic character, right? I don't know. We're all a little problematic, right? <laughs> Y'all tell me. <gasps> What's that, oh no, oh no, you know it's got octanoxate in it. Dad gum it, Giorgio Armani. So, new Designer Glow Radiant Revitalizing Foundation SPF 15. Stop it. Stop putting SPF 15 octanoxate in everything. These luxury foundations, they think that they're doing us some kind of favor by putting SPF that is not enough SPF, okay? So it doesn't help or make any difference. And it's using a chemical sunscreen, which I am particularly sensitive to octanoxate, but plenty of people are particularly sensitive to just any chemical sunscreen out there. So like, it's excluding so many people and for what? For nothing, for just such a negligible amount of actual sun protection, it's stupid. I'm sorry, I, I guarantee you, if you look at this, it, it says SPF 15 PA++++, available now in Asia. Okay, so it is only available in Asia, so it's gonna be a different chemical sunscreen that's in there, but regardless, SPF 15 is just so silly. But the other thing is I scrolled all the way right, and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like go off on this because like little old me is not gonna like change the makeup industry in Asia, but like it should not be acceptable to have a shade range that looks like that. There are people of every skin tone on every continent. There just are. The thing that breaks my heart is that it's probably an incredible formula because the Asian markets just get the most beautiful foundation formulas, but that shade range, even for Asia, the double standard they want us to have is unacceptable. <laughs> Jue. I haven't heard from Jue in so long. Are they, st are, Jue, are you good, girl? Jue is the essence of holiday gifting. It's like, Ah, it's makeup, it's like Stila, you know what I mean? You're like, those are colors of makeup that people put on their faces. Like, that's exactly what that strikes me as. I have grown so cynical from reviewing so much makeup that it is hard for me to kind of get excited about things that are okay, they're good, they're okay kind of thing. And Jouer is just, it's kind of on par with Stila to me, where I'm just like, that's good, that's okay. Okay, so next we have the new set Dark Star Labs 006 version four, volume four, from Pat McGrath. It includes the Blitz Sapphire Eyeshadow, Black and Sapphire with Bright Loose Sparkling Pearls, Cyber Electric Eye Gloss, Translucent with Cerulean Sparkling Pearls. So it is just an eyeshadow and an eye gloss, and honestly, y'all, I think it's really funny having me doing this, you know, what, this is like my sixth year of doing this as my job in one form or another, that like, I feel like, yes, we have seasonal colors of makeup, but I 
don't personally remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't personally remember winter being so literally blue. <laughs> They're like, winter, ice, blue, and like, fine. If that's what we're doing, it's cool to do something new and different, but we have Natasha Denona, probably Trixie Cosmetics, because <laughs> he just loves to do blue stuff, Pat McGrath, Michaela, I just saw something from Cosmic Brushes that like, it's not just like a pop of blue moment, it's like a blue palette. And if you watch like Teresa is Dead review the, the little mini palette from Natasha Denona or anything, the best that I can tell after working with those kinds of pigments myself is just that blue seems to be kind of a hard color to work with and a hard color to formulate for. And it's also because most people have undertones, like regardless of whether you actually have cool undertones, you still have undertones that are gonna kind of work against a really, really, really like bright blue. Like that's just not a naturally occurring color. And I don't mean that doesn't look good on you. I mean, it's tough to get it to build. That's what I'm talking about. So it's like you need to get full saturation on a blue like that, like a really radiant, like neon blue or really rich kind of sapphire blue. You have to get like full coverage in order for it to work because if you can see through it, your skin's gonna look really strange. You know what I mean? It's gonna distort the color. That's all I mean. I'm not saying blue doesn't look good on people. I personally, y'all know, I've done a few videos where I'm like, I'm gonna get outside my comfort zone enough because you know, I'll get the requests every once in a while. People are like, you do the same looks all the time. Guess what? No one watches the ones where I get out of my comfort zone. People want to see me try makeup that, that, that they wanna put on their face. You know, they don't wanna see me put rainbow on my face. That's just, and I don't wanna put rainbow on my face either. So this is not for me, but I do think that it's really interesting how there's, se I hope, I guess, that there seems to be a market right now, whether it be because winter or because what she's saying, like cyber blue, you know what I mean? Are we in the, the Y2K of it all where we're like really putting blue glitter eyeshadow on in a very serious way because we're channeling a very traumatizing time for millennials. <laughs> okay, I'm about to say something controversial, okay? This is going to be a, a hot take. This is the new candle set from Fleur and I was so excited to get this in the mail, y'all. And can I just, I will just buffer this by saying, A, I love almost everything that Fleur does, okay? I am obsessed obsessed with vanilla skin right now, the body spray, it's so good. And y'all know father figure, I might as well be drinking it, I work through it so fast. But the two holiday candles, it's Current Crush and Wild Balsam. I am not a fan, I'm really not a fan of Current Crush. It's just super, super fruity and just not for me. I wish it had a little bit more like basey, like dried stone fruit to it. It's just really on the nose, so to speak. But Wild Balsam, I love an evergreen scent, but I have learned that it really has to be the right one. I think that me personally, I just always kind of logged those things in my mind under like Bath and Body Works because I want it to be the balsam smell, but I want it to have kind of like a sweetness to it. Not creaminess necessarily, but just like, not just the spice of an evergreen, like a Christmas tree frond in my face, you know? And this is so spicy. Like when I light it, I'm just like, yikes, you know what I mean? It's almost like, like it kind of like gets you in your senses in a way that like I don't expect a candle to do. And if that's what you want, if you want to be just like slapped upside the head with like a very authentic evergreen smell, yes, absolutely. But I personally am like still on the birchwood pine of it all from Nest. I have two of them. I have one burning downstairs right now. They're not for me. They're not my preference. And I will say like from the standpoint of like whether you and I have the same preference, if you love a really, really strong piney evergreen that actually smells like you're in like the woods and you just cut a branch. It does an amazing job of that. It's just not for me. What? I've never wanted a Tom Ford perfume before and I've smelled a lot of them and they don't appeal to me, but Azure Lime? I at least need to smell it. That sounds incredible. Yeah, somebody commented, I'm surprised this is a late fall winter release. There are other hemispheres. It is about to be summer somewhere, but Citrus Shepra, Lime Water Infusion, South African Buchu Sandalwood. Mm-hmm. I need to smell that. That sounds freaking awesome. Carly Bible, the beauty Bible. After so many years in collabs with different brands, Carly Bible is now launching her own beauty brand. I have so many feelings about this. Carly Bible was never a creator who particularly reached me. We just don't have like, you know, similar tastes or similar ways of doing our makeup. And she's beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you know, just, I, I have absolutely nothing against her or her content. I think she does a great job, whatever. But A, knowing what it takes to put out a beauty brand, B, knowing what, 
decisions you can make putting out different colors. The fact that Carly Bible, easily 10 years after the height of her career, is putting out a beauty brand that is basically Jaclyn Hill, and the fact that it's called the Beauty Bible, which is what anyone would have named her brand. Any one. You could be chasing someone down on the sidewalk and be like, her name's Carly Bible, she's going to be putting out a beauty line, what are you going to name it? They'll be like, ah, leave me alone, the beauty Bible, and then they would just get on the subway, you know what I mean? Like, it feels like a Mandela effect, like, this didn't already exist? That's how it feels. <gasps> what? A Prada has come out with candles. Why do I even want to talk about that? Here, the, here's the question. Is it sold through Prada or Prada Beauty? Because Prada Beauty's not getting any more of my money. I just disputed a purchase on my credit card a month after ordering the Prada foundation for Tom after they claimed that I chose the wrong shade the first time that I sent them. Well, I bought it for myself. I bought it and brought it to Tom, basically. And then when they opened it, we found out it was the wrong shade. They blamed that one on me. Fine. But I sat there right in front of Tom on that very day and ordered them the correct shade and it just never came. They kept saying it was coming, I emailed them, I talked to them on WhatsApp every single day. They say it's gonna be there by the end of the day and it just isn't. And so yeah, I got my 80 whatever dollars back and Tom still doesn't have the right shade in the Prada Foundation and I am not going to recommend the Prada Foundation to anybody unless you're buying it from Selfridges because Prada cannot get their collective poop in a group. So, that was how I feel about that, but they put out candles and they look really pretty. I don't know, like there's something about this imagery that just kind of like does something for me. So they've got Infusion de Vanille, Infusion de Cidre, Infusion de Lys, and Infusion de Ylang. And I would be into smelling the vanilla. Y'all know me, I just love a vanilla candle. So yeah, they are $75 each, which an expensive candle. Signing me up, girl. Like, you're never gonna hear me get mad about an expensive candle. It says a vanilla and amber woody scent, smoky vanilla infusion with contrasting top notes of luminous bergamot, sparkling neroli, neroli doesn't smell like anything, and a base of woody angelica seeds. Sounds like something I'd like to smell, so maybe I will. How dare you, Jeffree Star? How dare you put out a Scorpio palette? That is just slander to all the Scorpios that I know. Get out of here. And why is Sophie still posting about it? Stop it. Okay, back on the Y2K train. Fenty is putting out liquid glitter eyeliners. I don't know why my brain like this just mushes all of them up. It's like mascara, eyeliner, eyeshadow, especially when you're talking about an eyeshadow stick. I want you to know my brain has trouble with eyeshadow stick every single time. I'm like, what is that thing? What do we call that? It's, I don't know. Either way, there are only three shades in this so far and it is silver, blue, and purple, which is just giving A, the winter thing or B, the cyber thing again, the like Y2K cyber future thing, future core, you know? It's like, oh, everything's going to be the future. And you just like think about like the IMAX, it looked like bubbles and like, and we're like, oh, Y2K, we're going to space, you know? I'm glad to see it coming back, but A, this packaging is not giving luxury to me. I do think of Fenty as being like firmly mid-range beauty, you know? And I do think that like the packaging matters and this does look like drugstore to me but also uh, I cannot imagine putting one of those on my eyes. I don't know why, it's just like not something that I would like. Also, if you'd like to take a trip down memory lane with me, I would be interested to know if they behave like their predecessors, you know, from our generation where they just kind of like seized up and cracked and like wore off in strange ways because I don't know, making a glitter eyeliner like that, that's like, it's not just a glitter eyeliner, it's not like a Stila Magnificent Metals, like it's actually got a lot of pigment to it. I would. Uh, to see. It's kind of like chromey. It's also something that I'm terrible at applying. Terrible at applying. Uh-oh. Yeah. Ha <laughs> You served up something boring and expensive? Gosh, actually, well, she, I'm not sure if she's got the price wrong here. I think that that's a price for like the refill or something. Like with the packaging, I bet it's like twice that. But this is the Beyond Wear Setting and Refining Powder from Burberry. And it's already out, so I guess that price is correct, but it says that it's $48.50. I know that that's not nothing, but Burberry could be charging Hermes prices, you know what I mean? Why is it white in the middle? Ultra thin powders with skin protecting ingredients like raspberry stem cell and Vitalit E. It helps control, shine, and lock your foundation in place while soaking into pores uh, to keep skin smooth and comfortable all day. Use it as a finishing touch for your teen or as just a burst of hydration. Hydrating powder always sounds really interesting to me, but like, what's the white part? Oh, 
Yeah, somebody says, why is it white in the middle? What do I do with it? It says to make it extra ashy. Dude, if that's the case, then I am deeply worried. Because if it literally just has like a white patch in the middle of all of it, that completely negates the fact that like a translucent powder with like a little bit of like a dark tone would be translucent enough on a deep skin tone. You know what I mean? Like I'm imagining something virtually disappearing basically, but like that's not, hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm like very weirded out by the middle actually. I thought that that was some kind of branding or something for the image, but it looks like it's literally just a big white blob of powder for all skin tones. Is that the hydration part? I'm confused. Oy vey. Oy vey. I cannot believe James Charles really, you know what I can. That is the embodiment of audacity, that human being. And now we have this big pink and red palette under his painted brand. And I love that it's called the basic canvas. Like you really put the word basic. I would never put the word basic in, in anything that I put out from a brand. Like I don't want anybody to think of my stuff as basic. I mean, there's basics, there's essentials, there's staples, there's, you know, Im important things that you need in your team, but like the b basic, plus this is not basic. Like those are such vivid, painty colors. I actually don't really want to put any of those on my eyes. I would venture to say, I don't think that James Charles has a very good grasp of color theory, okay? I've seen his foundation matching. I've seen his eyeshadow looks. We're talking about color, color, color. I think that he has a talented hand and I think that he obviously has a mind for marketing, but I don't think that he has an eye for color theory. And we're moving on. Pleasing is putting out perfumes. I want to smell them. Plum tobacco leaves, orris butter, vanilla Madagascar crisp amber, rivulets. I think that this is so perfectly pretentious. I think that perfumes should be perfectly pretentious. And I think that if Harry Styles, if Harry Styles had started Pleasing as a perfume company, I think I would have been even more on board because I think perfume is like the thing that makes the most sense for him. You know, he's just like, hey, look at me. I'm selling my essence all the time. My lyrics aren't really that good. I'm a lot more of like a performer. I seem like a lot of fun to be around. Like, I just think that he is the human embodiment of a perfume. It's whatever you like. It's your preference. It's a little bit unnecessary and ostentatious, but a lot of fun. Like Harry Styles is a human perfume. It makes sense. Oh God! I was hoping I wouldn't have to look at this again. The, oh no! Oh no, sorry. This is the Elton John collection with Charlotte Tilbury and I can put on the accent again if you'd like, but yeah, this is all really up close because Sophie has actually gotten her hands on it and the colors of the lipsticks are not something that I would wear. The sunglasses are kind of cool that came in the PR package. I don't think that that's something that, yeah, because it also came with a vinyl of his Christmas album, Step Into Christmas, which is one of the worst songs that Elton John does. By the way, I am an Elton John fan. There are just a handful of his songs where I'm just like, that one? Her? And yeah, Step Into Christmas is like, yikes. So yep, uh, my feelings haven't changed there. I do like the little stars on the outside of the lipsticks. That looks kind of cool, but the lipstick colors don't appeal to me. Uh-oh. This is a blurry picture of a Rare Beauty advent calendar, which leads me to believe that I'm going to get a very large package in the mail at some point because I am happily, gratefully on Rare Beauty's PR list. I'm so glad that they send me their new stuff because I love being able to review it. I don't need tiny versions of everything. And I certainly don't need doubles of everything, but it looks neat. This is one of those kind of like unofficial posts where they're like, ooh, we saw this. Is this coming out? Is there an advent calendar coming out from Rare Beauty kind of thing? And it looks like, yes, absolutely. It's definitely a lot and it's a lot of minis and I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Although a mini of her blushes still lasts you for the rest of your life. Okay, so we're back to the Sephora sale at this point and I beat the Sephora sale into submission and then I just beat it a little bit more just for good measure, you know, just to make sure that we got everything out of it. So I don't think that it's really necessary to talk about anything past that. So I hope this is a fun little touch base for y'all. I really barely spent any mental money on this, but that's okay because when I did my Black Friday sale video through putting together all of like the shoppable pages and everything, I put some stuff in my cart too. So like, it, don't worry, there are things coming our way, but uh, it's not happening from anything that's coming out really for, for holiday. And um, that's fine. I think that that's kind of the point of holidays. It's like, if you have a makeup lover to buy for, then absolutely more power to you. I will say like my recommendation is to buy them something that 
is going to get used and loved and be iconic in their collection, like, for example, the Clinique Black Honey lipstick that's in that gorgeous case, or like, you know, the new YSL holiday packaging and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's a product someone's going to use versus an advent calendar. I don't know. I just think that advent calendars are really like, just super unnecessary. I just think they're unnecessary, but that's just my cynical opinion you should enjoy whatever you want to enjoy and also you should enjoy like the advent calendar unboxings and things like that like i think that those are harmless but anyway for your gifting needs i do absolutely encourage you to check out my link down below so that you can see what's on offer at ana luisa right now for the holidays and they're just like i said doing incredible things up to 35 percent off site wide and you can use my code if you need to, if it's a better discount, uh, for 20% off Khaki 20, you know, just test it out. See what gets you the best Borgen. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you're new here, cool people subscribe. Subscribe if you're cool. It'd be cool if you did. I will put a video up here that I think that you'll enjoy if you liked this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, y'all. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.